for some time now, we've been hearing that Valve might be working on a portable gaming console or a portable gaming PC. And out of the blue, yesterday, Valve made the official announcement. It's called the Steam Deck. And the obvious comparison that will be made is to the Nintendo Switch. Many will say, you know, this is the Switch Pro that Nintendo should have released instead of the, the OLED model or the Switch Pro that Nintendo has yet to release. Now, funny enough, Valve did announce this device the same day that Switch OLED went up for pre-orders, and I don't know if that was just a coincidence or if that was intentional, but it's important to keep in mind that Steam Deck isn't really a console. It's actually quite literally just a PC that is a small form factor with controllers attached on the sides. It does run SteamOS, but with a Linux base, runs both Linux and Windows games and feels more like Windows according to IGN in terms of just the interface. You can install programs and apps on it. You can download other storefronts and play their games. So if you have Game Pass, you can play those games on the Steam Deck, no limitations there. You can mod your games. You can load up emulators and ROMs. You can hook up a mouse and keyboard and peripheral to a dock and use it as you would with any other computer. You can hook up monitors to it. You can do a fresh install of Windows if you want. Basically, anything you can do on a PC, on a computer, you can do on the Steam Deck. It's that simple. Productivity isn't its main purpose, keep in mind, but you can use it for that too with the right setup. Now, there's only so much horsepower you can fit into such a small chassis. I don't know if you'll be editing 4K videos on Premiere Pro or something along those lines, but the target of this device is gaming at high-end 720p 60 frames per second, though the 16 by 10 aspect ratio of the 7-inch screen does mean that the resolution is actually 1280 by 800 instead of 1280 by 720, so you get a little more vertical space. The panel will be LCD, not OLED, which is a little disappointing as colors just pop a lot more with OLED and its true blacks, but LCD is fine as well. It is 720p, which for a 7-inch screen, honestly, is good enough, and it makes more sense and 1080p as having to play games at 1080p means battery will be worse, the internal components will have to be pushed more and you could see throttling and whatnot. I think 720p for this smaller size screen is a good balance. Now the IGN editor who covered this on the IGN feature of the Steam Deck said that he played Basically, various, you know, both indie games and AAA games from a range of medium to high settings at high frame rates for the titles that he got to try. Now, the games that I saw on the video itself didn't seem like the most demanding, per se. I didn't see him test out titles like Metro or Cyberpunk. But at 720p, performance is bound to be more consistent. And the hardware that this chassis houses is a 4-core Zen 2 architecture CPU, SMT-enabled, up to 8 threads. And as far as GPU goes, it is RDNA 2 architecture, supports ray tracing and variable ray shading. So across the board, the latest architecture from AMD, though obviously it's been modified and downscaled to fit and work in this smaller form factor. There's about a total of two teraflops of APU combined power, which is a little more than PS4's 1.84 teraflops, but less than PS4 Pro's 4.2 teraflops. There's 16 gigs of RAM in it, and that should be plenty for the purposes of this device. Now, I do wonder if when you dock the device and it's charging, you'll be able to overclock the devices, components, its chips for better graphics fidelity so that you can output a 1080p on a monitor instead of 720p on the screen. So similar to how Switch does it, where it's a little more powerful when it's actually docked. Uh, no information on that front yet, though I suspect that their main goal is to make a portable device and that 720p AAA gaming is probably their main target, which, you know, for such a small device, that's pretty reasonable. But I also do hope that when you dock it, you can get a bit more horsepower out of it through some overclocking functionalities. But we'll see. In the end, we'll just have to wait for real-world tests and benchmarks to gauge performance. Now, as far as battery goes, which is pretty important for a portable device like this, the size of the battery is 40 watt hours, and apparently it's set to last anywhere between two to eight hours, depending on how demanding the game you're playing is. So I imagine that Minecraft will probably last you longer than, say, Cyberpunk 2077. Now, the button layout of this device does seem a bit strange. It certainly turns some heads. The D-pad and face buttons are in line with the analog sticks instead of diagonally offset as is traditional. iGen editor Bo Moore, who went hands-on with the device, 
also expressed he was skeptical about the button layout, but when he got his hands on it, he said it actually turned out to be a lot more comfortable than he expected. I'm someone with smaller hands, so I don't know how this device will feel for me, how comfortable it'll be. Now, the four programmable rear buttons built in for additional customization, I think that's a great addition. And I also love the inclusion of the track pads, which seem to be in a good diagonally misplaced position. And as someone who got used to the Steam controller here and using this track pad and the various functionalities that it has, especially in games that require aiming and shooting using the trackpad combined with the gyroscopic controls that actually felt really great I played Death Stranding at one point with this and I felt it was just the most comfortable way to play that game and the fact that they're bringing back the Steam controller in some way by infusing it into this new portable gaming PC device I think is really cool that they're trying to further that a little bit and according to the specs list there is HD haptics on it which I surmise means that for the trackpad as well you'll feel out those motions you do on it those gestures at least which is something that the original Steam controller had and that's a vital aspect to the tactility and the accuracy of being able to use the track pads so I hope that makes a comeback and I hope that's what the HD haptics means here now going back to the internals if you were hoping that you'd be able to upgrade this device say for storage you cannot upgrade any aspect of it you'll essentially have to wait for new upgraded releases of this device if you're hoping for something more powerful but storage can be expanded with an SD card slot being built in. As far as internal memory goes, there are three models. There's the $400 model that only has 64 gigabytes of EMMC storage, so it's slower storage and it's a minuscule amount of storage. You'll be able to download maybe a couple indie games at best and maybe one AAA game, if that. With this model, while it is the cheapest model at $400, you'll definitely be spending money on an SD card. So I'd say the $400 price point here is a bit misleading at 64 gigabytes doesn't make this particularly a useful device until you expand that storage. Now going up to the $530 model, you get 256 gigabytes of NVMe SSD storage, PCI Gen 3. And then finally you have $650 model, which comes with 512 gigabytes of high-end NVMe SSD storage, PCI Gen 3. So the higher you go, you not only get more storage, but you also get faster storage. And another bonus to the $650 model is that it comes with an anti-glare etched glass screen that the other models don't come with. Now obviously whether this is affordable will largely depend on your own financial situation, but it does feel like they're trying to set prices to be competitive. Obviously this is, you know, like $650, that's more expensive than the $500 uh, PlayStation 5 or the, you know, $500 Xbox Series X. But this is a portable device, a lot of hardware compressed into it to be able to play AAA games at you know, at least 720p with high settings. I'd say overall, these devices are in a price range where people who really want to get something like this are eventually able to afford it. We're not talking about, you know, a $1,000 price point. Prices are within a reasonable enough range that this device has the potential to succeed a decent amount to appeal to a wide enough audience base, though that'll be up to how this device is promoted and marketed and ultimately it'll be a matter of how well this device works how well it performs in that 720p screen how usable it really is whether it fills a void in customers lives if you will Gabe Newell himself said in an IGN interview that keeping the price down for this was painful but critical now keeping these prices this low probably does mean that it's not going to be composed of the highest quality materials and whatnot but as long as it feels solid enough, comfortable enough, and has the performance to handle most PC games at 720p, which is the promise, you know, then those price points may be worth it for a good amount of people who'd love to take their PC games on the go in a device that feels intuitive to use. Now, from a visual perspective, I wouldn't say it's the most elegant looking handheld device it kind of reminds a lot of people of the game gear like a more like a bigger more modernized version but it does seem to pack a lot of functionality which to me is what matters more i do wish the screen filled up more of the bezel i do wish the design was a bit more minimalistic but as long as it's functional and comfortable you know it looks to be good enough it is obviously chonkier than the switch but towards the screen area there is enough thinness to it and it does look portable enough to you know 
put this in a case and take it on the go. The controller grips on the sides obviously do add a level of thickness on each side, but you know that will make for a more comfortable experience. Now as far as dimensions and weight goes, it is definitely just across the board larger than a device like Switch. So as far as dimensions go, 11.73 by 4.61 by 1.93 inches. Quite a bit larger than Switch's 9.4 by 4 by 0.55 inches. Now the 1.93 inches I surmise has to do with the controller grips on either side. I imagine if you just take the thin side on the where the screen is, it's probably gonna maybe be closer to one inch. Like right here you can see this is probably what the two inches refers to and then sort of this region, this screen area, that thickness looks to be yeah closer to like about half of the thickness of the grip. As far as weight goes, the Steam Deck is definitely heavier. 669 nice grams, or about 1.47 pounds. That's a fair bit heavier than Nintendo Switch's 400 grams, or about 0.88 pounds, but doesn't seem unmanageable, especially because you do have those grips that allow you to hold the console in a more comfortable position, but it will be noticeably heavier, and if you get fatigued from holding a device up for long, that might be accelerated by that additional weight. But, you know, obviously that depends from person to person. So those are things that we know about the device, but there's still some questions like, how do the speaker sound? You can see two grills on either side of the console, but you really don't know how they sound until you hear them yourself. But even if it doesn't turn out to be of great quality, you do have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and you got Bluetooth for wireless headphones connection if that's more your speed. In terms of the quality of construction of the device, what is that going to be like? So one of the issues that I had with, say, like the Steam Controller is, while I loved the concept of it, the build quality is certainly something that leaves a lot to be desired, and I hope that is something that will be rectified. You know, do the buttons feel okay? Uh, how is the, the grip experience like? It's one of those things that I, I, I'm going to have to try for myself and it's going to also have a lot to do with personal taste and and the buttons and the d-pad being so close to kind of towards the 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 edges of the device is that going to feel comfortable going from analog stick to the buttons like that and then the trackpads down here with all said and done it's hard to immediately be on board this device until again i actually get to experience it for myself but i'm actually really excited about the potential of a device like this and hopefully that'll kickstart a movement for more devices of this form factor to come out and one of the great things that Valve is doing is that they're opening SteamOS up to other manufacturers to come up with their own portable gaming PCs that utilize the same OS so we might see other manufacturers go for more powerful devices that will allow you to scale your, your games up to high resolutions and graphics or others that might focus more on battery life and portability all kinds of things can be done with this, and so I do wish this to be a success. I hope the Valve or the Steam Deck will be a strong enough kicking off point that it'll draw attention and start pushing this type of form factor forward as, uh, yeah, playing PC games on the go. You know, that, that is a, a great prospect. That sounds like a winner if executed properly. But until that happens, until they start shipping on December of 2021 with reservations opening actually today in like two hours as of the recording of this video, let me know in the comments below what your take is on the Steam Deck. Are you compelled by this advice? Are you in wait and see mode or are you in the camp of I don't need this? Share your thoughts below and to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.